Hello there. Uh, this video is going to be slightly different than uh, some of the others where I've talked about some discrete legal issues and documents out of the Mass Casualty Commission and what I think they mean. What I'm going to talk about today is a drive that I took through the Port of Peak area, uh, through that road and, and that region. I was actually going off to do a three-day uh, backpacking, hiking uh, excursion uh, before the parks close for the season here in Nova Scotia. So I went to uh, Cape Chignecto, which is uh, a really nice area, uh, somewhere I'd never been before. You know, I, I always enjoyed these multiple day uh, backpacking, uh, hiking trips. Um, the great exercise, good for balance, and you need to really have the strength and endurance uh, to stay nimble over long distances uh, where every step you take uh, needs to be measured. So and it's good to test out your gear and test out yourself, your fitness, uh, every once in a while to make sure uh, everything still works. So Cape Chignecto is, uh, you know, I've been many other places doing these kinds of trips, but not this jewel that's in our own backyard, so I was really glad to get up there. Uh, the drive through there takes you through and past Porta Peak, and I thought it was really interesting. I'd been there probably a little over 10 years ago, uh, actually another camping trip up to Five Islands, uh, but it hadn't really stuck with me. And so when I was driving through and you see the Porta Peak sign, uh, first of all, it kind of catches you a little bit because uh, uh, every, everything associated with it. But you drive basically from Mastown Market to Cape Chignecto and it's really just one main road. It branches off at some point, but it's one main road that goes through. And it reminds you of many other drives in Nova Scotia you might be familiar with, whether you're going from Wolfville to Blomidon out the, through the valley, uh, Lunenburg to Chester, Guysboro to Canso, Judic up to Inverness. These, uh, these drives are familiar to us. It's kind of secondary, used to be uh, bigger uh, roadways. You know, and if not for the signs, it wouldn't always be obvious where one community ends and the other one begins. Now, uh, Porta Peak, when you come across it, uh, you drive through it before very long, and off to the left, as you're going out to Cape Chignecto on the water side, is Porta Peak Beach Road. And this is a separate road, uh, and it's far enough uh, from the main road that you can't see the shoreline, and you can't even see the houses that are, are still there. The When you look in from the main road into Porta Peak Beach Road, and then on the right side, if you're looking in from the road, there's the Porta Peak uh, River that goes there. So when you're looking at it, I think I was thinking about this from the perspective of the police. If they're wondering if the shooter is still in Porta Peak or if he'd escaped at any point, uh, really escape on the right side on the river side would be uh, nearly impossible unless you had very specialized gear, which uh, you wouldn't expect. But on the other side, uh, just a few hundred feet down the road from Porta Peak Beach Road is this dirt road that you may have heard referenced in other stories, but it seems clear, even if you weren't somebody that was very familiar with the area, that this might be an obvious way to get out of there. To uh, you know, it leads past the this dirt road leads past the first level of housing, and it's clear that whatever's beyond there is it's flat terrain. So uh, the question I have is, what did the first responding police officers? know about the area. How familiar were they with the, the Porta Peak area, that route number two uh, roadway? Because it's hard to imagine not checking uh, to see if there could have been an escape in that direction if you were on scene and wondering whether the killer had been contained or whether he had uh, managed to get through. So hopefully we'll hear about that uh, part of uh, the situation in the first few days of testimony. Also when you drive back from uh, Cape Chignecto and back through towards Truro, you drive through and you see where uh, the killer had gone through along really the only road that goes back towards uh, Mastown and Truro and there's really no obvious hiding spots along that way so it leads to the thinking of well if the Truro police had been called right away or if they had been uh, engaged you know sooner perhaps uh, would they have driven towards the scene in that direction well they would have and would they have encountered uh, the gunman with his uh, RCMP replica car. So there's some jurisdictional issues that are coming across there. Like when you're in Porta Peak, the two closest 
sort of population centers are Parsboro on one side and then Truro on the other. And that's where you would have expected the the response would originate. Any any kind of a a major response to a major incident would res, would originate one of those two centers, most likely Truro. So it'll be a, a question that uh, comes up early on, uh, perhaps in the in the proceedings as we get there in October. Uh, but that's a question or thoughts that I had as I drove through uh, towards Cape Chignecto. Uh, through the beautiful community of Porta Peak, and that whole area is just uh, just incredible, and um, highly recommend it. But it's uh, it raises a lot of questions when you go through there as to to what may have occurred and uh, what uh, maybe should have occurred. So those are the thoughts uh, for today. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll, I'll see you next time.